Oh, yeah, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Um, our scripture reading this morning is taken from Matthew 26, verses 26 through to 33. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body. Then he, brought, then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink from this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in, the father's, in, in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus told them, this very night you will all fall away on account of me. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I have risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. Peter replied, even if all fall away on account of you, I never will. May the Lord add a rich blessing to the reading of his holy words. Strength from 
you so much sister angelia for that beautiful music god has truly gifted you praise the lord uh, and thank you so much for all that you do in your expression of love toward god for this ministry and also like to just thank sister marcia for that uh, beautiful reading of scripture as well as brother alvin leading out in prayer it's always a joy to see the people of God uh, answering the call of God and utilizing their talents to present the presence of God to the people of God. Today, as usual, we want to encourage you, as always, toward faithfulness and giving toward the cause of God here at Even Home Ministry. Want to just re uh, remind you yet once again to covenant and partnership with us as you give toward the cause of God, uh, seeking the Holy Spirit to know exactly what he would have you to give, be it 50, 150, 200, or even more per month, knowing that the cause of God is needing to be upheld in a very uh, important way to uphold God's kingdom and the work here in this portion of the vineyard. You can give by Eden Home Ministry, uh, dollar sign Eden Home Ministries through Cash App or through EdenHome.Ministries at gmail.com by Zelly or through PayPal, EdenHomeMinistries.org forward slash donate. We want to ask that you will take this time and opportunity to take out your instruments of giving. And we want to just pause for a moment to allow you to give to God's cause. And just know and recognize that in giving for the cause of God, you cannot be God's giving. God loves a cheerful giver. Each of us should give as we have decided in our hearts, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God truly loves the cheerful giver. So we invite you now to bow your heads as the Holy Spirit speaks to you with regards to giving toward the cause of God. Father in heaven, we seek to please you in every way. And we know that there are dire needs that are present on this platform and for this ministry. And so we ask you move upon our hearts to give liberally for your cause, your namesake and glory in Jesus name. want to just remind you of our theme for this year, which is the kingdom in you in 2022. We have taken the steps and measures to present to you week after week the reality of the kingdom and that God lives within each and every believer. The kingdom in you is a real living, breathing dynamic and is recognized in tangible and touchable ways, wherein God wants to radicalize you to be fearless, 
functional and free in the gospel. The message today that we have pointed in your direction is nonetheless a message that helps to remind us of God's kingdom initiative operating for, in, and through us. And uh, today we want to point to you a message that I hope will inspire your heart uh, in, to be refreshed in the love and in the grace of God that you might come to know and experience the fullness of his presence in a particular way. I believe that whenever God's people come together in this fashion, they are never short of receiving what God has to give. My old pastor used to always say that God never fails to give, we fail to receive. So when the promise of God is assured to us that, uh, that two or three are gathered in his name, it is always for us to know that he is in the midst, that he is in the midst. All right. Uh, I want to ask the screen is the screen. Up. I need somebody to just give me a, a shout, yay or nay. All right. Does anyone see that? What's above? Some, if so, just someone say amen. Okay, I guess not. I'm seeing the scripture, the verse. Okay, is it moving? I can see it. It's tiny, but I can see it. Okay, didn't be tiny. <laughs> All right. I'm reading to you from Matthew 26 and verse 26 through 33, beginning with verse 26. Did, is everyone able to see verse 26 there? Yes. Amen. Thank you. While they were eating, Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body. Then he took a cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink from this fruit of the vine from now on until the day when I drink it new with you in my father's kingdom. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus told them, this very night you will all fall away on account of me. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I have risen, I will go ahead of you unto Galilee. Peter then replied, even if all fall away on account of you, I will never. I want to repeat this verse in the King James Version for emphasis, verse 33 again. Peter answered and said unto him, though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet will I never be offended. I want to speak to you on the subject, never offended. Let's pray. Father, I need your voice to be heard through mine. In order for that to happen, you need to take control of my mind and possess my mouth. So God, I'm praying that the supernatural 
event whereby I have seen you work time and time again. I plead this morning once again, pleading this morning yet once again, that you would assure yourself, draw close to me, Savior, my master. I cannot stand here alone. I need you. So I pray you come nigh my borders, that the people of God be refreshed while I am preaching. While I'm teaching, I lend myself to humble agreement to hear your voice and follow. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Peter, at a most crucial time, when he should have been able to be victorious, when he should have fulfilled his call at the moment of his 15 minutes of fame, when he was called to the fore to represent his master and to lay claims of his discipleship and to attest and confess to having followed Jesus for three and a half years, when he should have spoken up, when he should have taken the opportunity to avail himself of being the follower of Jesus Christ, he did not. Having followed him for three and a half years, he knew and understood Christ's innocence, that he was not guilty of what Pilate had accused him of or the, the, the riotous crowd that spoke against him to be crucified. Peter had witnessed miracle after miracle after miracle. He knew the purposes of Jesus. He understood his function. He understood that Christ had come. He had come for the purpose of his father. Peter had pledged his allegiance, but at the time that it was most needed, cowardice and lack of courage overtook him. Hmm. Yet it was Peter who said, even if everyone on the account of you will forsake, will forsake you, I never will. You know, it makes one wonder, how is it that Peter failed? How is it that Peter didn't live up to the expectation of coming to his master's defense at the time it was most needed? You know, in a sense, in a sense, you can't really uh, blame Peter. And you might say, well, wait a minute, pastor, why not? Well, notice carefully, Matthew, the 34th verse, chapter 26, tells us, truly I say, Jesus answered, this very night before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. Hmm. In other words, Jesus personally prophesied on Peter and told him <laughs> that by the time the rooster crows, the third time you will have done, by the time the rooster crows, you will have disowned me three times. I mean, really, if Jesus prophesies, if Jesus speaks, it's not as if it were you speaking or me speaking, which you can take my word with a grain of salt and you can, you can know that if I say something, certainly it may not come to pass, but we're not talking about you or me. We're talking about the one whom the prophet declares he is not the son of man that he should repent, nor the son of man that he should lie. Hath he not said, shall it not be done? Hath he not spoken, shall it not be made well? If Jesus says it, you better believe it's going to be fulfilled or he is not God. Did Peter really have a chance? I mean, if God prophesied it, oh, it's not as if God is going to be wrong. I mean, could you imagine Jesus somehow proving uh, Peter that he would actually go through with 
confessing that Christ was his master and disciple and be crucified with him. And, and Peter is hung up next to Jesus and looks over to Jesus and said, see, I told you I was right. I wouldn't forsake you. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Jesus prophesied over Peter. Did he really even have any other choice than but to betray Christ? I mean, let's 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 just be real about it. Have you ever felt uh, disadvantaged that God had it out for you? Maybe perhaps it was that child that was 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 misconceived or or that was miscarried. Perhaps you were diagnosed with cancer in spite of the problem, in spite of the fact that you've done all that you can to live a wholesome, healthy lifestyle. And yet God allowed you to come down with disease or perhaps you with great consultation in prayer, pleading with God for that perfect spouse. And yet you have a broken marriage or perhaps an untimely death of a loved one that you pleaded with God, Lord, please heal this person, save them, don't let them die. And yet you feel like God has spoken a curse into your life. Many of us won't admit it, but we've been there. We have felt in circumstances where we were expecting more of God's blessing to happen Yet, it seems on every turn, every time we turn around, it seems like God has spoken disadvantage in my life. We've all been there. I can attest to the same that at times I've wondered, what in the world are you doing, God? But you can't really fault Peter in some respect. Because God spoke it, he said it. And it wasn't as if Peter didn't have faith. I mean, notice what Peter said when, when God spoke his prophecy concerning Peter. He said, even if all fall away on account of you, I never will. Peter had faith. Peter believed with all of his heart that he would stand firm. And the Bible tells us that without faith, it's impossible to please God, for he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. The Bible says, according to your faith, so be it unto you. Peter had believed that he was going to stand faithful. So we can't really fault Peter. He, he demonstrates a certain sense of faith. Peter was a positive, self-assured person. It's like many of my friends that I've had over the years who have been some involved in network marketing, they're the kind of people who see the glass half full instead of half empty. And they tend to avoid negative people. They don't like to be around uh, those who don't speak of possibility. They're the kind of people who always want to be around positive people and not negative people people who seem to demonstrate faith with their mouth. They're the kind of people who says, if you can believe it, you can achieve it. Peter was full of faith and yet at a time when it was needed, it seemed as if that faith did him no good. Arnold Palmer had a placard on his wall in his office that states the man who thinks he can if you think you are beaten you are if you think you dare not you don't if you'd like to win but you think you can't it's almost certain you won't life's battles don't always go to the stronger or faster man but sooner or later the man who wins is the man who thinks he can Peter had faith. So why didn't Jesus, Peter follow Jesus to the cross? Why did he fail at the crucial moment when it was expected, when he had expected that he would come through, that he wouldn't, his faith wouldn't falter? Hmm. Yes, 
Peter had faith. But watch this. Peter had more confidence in himself than he had in God. Yes, he had faith, but he was more positive about his ability to keep himself than God's grace. There are many whose understanding of the gospel involves having more confidence in what they can do for God through obedience than recognizing what God has already done. You see, Peter failed to see what Jesus had already done. And what was that? Notice carefully, Luke 22 and verse 31, and talking about the situation with Peter, it says, Simon, Simon, I indeed Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. But watch this now. Notice carefully what Jesus says. Even though he told him, by the, by the time the cock crows, you would have denied me three times. In verse 32, he says, but I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. Hmm. Hmm. Hallelujah. You see, Peter should have recognized as soon as Jesus said, I prayed for you, that that's more than just meaningless words that fall to the ground because when Jesus Pray to an open tomb, Lazarus came forth. When Jesus spoke and prayed to the situation of the, of the demoniac, he was made whole. When Jesus prayed to the wind, hallelujah, the storm calmed. When Jesus prayed to the situation of the woman who had an issue of blood, she became whole. When Jesus prays, things happen. Jesus cannot pray and nothing happens. When Jesus told Peter that I prayed for you, he should have immediately recognized that even though, even though my courage might be tested, Jesus has prayed for me. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Christ didn't pray for Peter to win the battle, but instead that he wouldn't lose the war. Yeah. That Pe Peter wouldn't suffer failure, but that he wouldn't throw in the towel. That Peter wouldn't win the sprint, but that he would stay the course and finish the marathon. He said, Satan has sifted you. And guess what? Before the cock crows, you would have, you would have betrayed me. But he says, I prayed for you. <laughs> And what I'm praying for is not that you might not have a moment of lapse, might not, not, not that you might not make a mistake, might, not that you might not fail at the moment, but that your faith ultimately would hang in there. Because you, see, the Bible says that a righteous man falls seven times, but he gets up again. I'm here to tell you that God is not so much concerned about your failure, but that you get up again and that you answer his prayer, that strength has come to your borders and that when he calls your name in prayer, it's not without strength. That when God calls your name, he's calling you to the forefront because all of his biddings are enablings, that you will never fail because the Bible says he will never leave you nor forsake you. And when the words of his prayer are heard in your ears, you can better best that when your circumstances are not the best, you can take a deep breath because you know Jesus has prayed for you. When that loved one has died un unexpectedly, you can take a deep breath because Jesus has prayed for you. When everything seems to be a wreck in your life, you can take a deep breath because you know that Jesus has prayed for you. Christ has testified in John the 17th chapter that your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen the brethren. But do you know that Jesus, hallelujah, not only did he speak and say, I've prayed for you, Peter. 
But watch this now. Jesus, after he was, as he was about to go to the cross, he pointed that prayer toward us that he too would pray for us. <laughs> the same privilege that Peter had, that Jesus would pray for him. Jesus said in John, the 17th chapter, and verse 20, pointed toward you. I do not pray for these alone, meaning his disciples, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. Hallelujah. I'm here to declare to you that in your moments of distress, when you are called to the stage for your 15 minutes of fame, even if somehow you falter and fail, Jesus has prayed for you. That when you have lost that child by miscarriage, Jesus has prayed for you. That when sickness and affliction torments you, Jesus has prayed for you. When things seem broken in your best relationships, Jesus has prayed for you. And when that loved one has died and, and your heart is broken, I'm telling you, Jesus' heart is broken because he's prayed for you. Every opportunity that meets with a negative response, you can meet it with a positive one if you just remember. Jesus has prayed and is praying for you. Peter really, in all truth, didn't understand the gospel. Now watch this. Because in Matthew, the 16th chapter, as Jesus foretells the events that he would take, the, the steps and measures he would take in order to fulfill salvation for mankind, he told Peter these words from that time, he said he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests, scribes, and be killed and be raised on the third day. Here Jesus is telling Peter what he has to do, showing and revealing to Peter his mission of salvation, that the offer of, of eternal life would be given to mankind as he gives his life for the cause of mankind for their salvation. But then notice what Peter, how he responds. Far be it from you, Lord, this shall never happen to you. In other words, Peter thought that somehow he could play an intricate role in protecting Jesus from the very mission that he was called to answer from his father. Now, why am I saying this? Because so many have a gospel that believes that somehow they can play a bigger role in fulfilling what's necessary to preserve the, the mission of Christ, that I will demonstrate what it means to be a true Christian, and hence they are more dependent on what they can do rather than what Jesus has already done. You see, Peter had no reason to be self-assured or to have confidence in himself that by telling Jesus, you know, all men shall forsake you, but not I. For this was the same Jesus who, the same Peter who failed to walk on top of the water after his midway point of reaching Jesus. This was the same Peter who wanted to call down lightning and thunder upon the people present and Jesus had to correct him. This would be the same Peter who would later cut off the ear of the soldier. Peter had no reason to be self-assured. And yet many have endorsed and become the victim of a false gospel who believes that somehow we can trust in believing what we're able to accomplish. And sometimes we do it and, and, and many do it because they believe it's what Christ can do in and through them. But even what Christ is willing to do through us is never more potent and powerful than what Christ has been able to do all by himself by hanging on the cross. That through hanging on that cross, he was able to render to us pardon 
and forgiveness. That by hanging on the cross, he was able to accentuate justification above sanctification. There are many who, like Peter, don't have a true understanding of the gospel. They have been taught that it's more about what you can do for Christ. Their gospel is more about sanctification than justification. Does God want us to live holy? Yes, he does. But never should we ever put our ability above what Christ has already done. There's nothing wrong with being positive or confident as long as it does not replace or displace our confidence in Christ. The gospel is more, uh, their gospel, uh, this false gospel often caters to sanctification more than justification. It's more about what I can do with the help of Christ than what Christ has done all by himself. You see, the gospel is about understanding what Christ has already done. Second, first Peter two and verse 24, who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we having died to sin might live for righteousness by whose stripes you were healed. The devil might lie and whisper in your ear that I've been conquered by my situation and circumstances, but I'm here to set the record straight that you have not been conquered by your circumstances for the same God speaks and whispers in your ears and says, you are more than a conqueror through him that loved you. The devil might lie to you and make you think that having that disease is the end of the story. But I'm here to declare to you that if that sickness does happen to overtake you, there's a day when there will be no more sickness, no more pain, no more sorrow, no more affliction, no more heartache. For the day will come when God will blow the trumpet and heal every malady that went into the grave and come forth with resurrection power. You might feel because you have made a mistake, that you are condemned. But God said, and I want you to hear me clearly this morning, that no amount of condemnation will stick to those who still continue to walk in faith, who still continue to trust in his spirit. For the Bible declares unto us, there is therefore now no condemnation, condemnation. to them who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not according to, to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Keep on walking. Amen. Keep on striving. Yes. <laughs> Though you might drop the cross, pick it up. Pick it up. And keep on walking. Hallelujah. Though you might feel the pains of life's circumstances surround you, I'm here to tell you that you're surrounded by a host of angels, yeah. for it is in Hebrews that he says, we have a more sure word of prophecy. We have and are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. Mm -hmm. Those who have gone before you, who traveled this road, were able to, to strive continually, and their testimony is one that we can that to whom was set before us the race that we also can run diligently because Jesus has prayed for us. John the 19th chapter and verse 30 is the testimony that should have been born upon the heart and lips of Peter that because he would die on the cross, just only moments from his own betrayal, that the finished work of Jesus is able to do its work. And here's the beautiful testimony. I don't wanna leave Peter having hung in the balances and simply failed, but Peter did come forth victorious because Jesus said to Peter, 
if you would just hang in there, he said to him, and I love the way it's written in the book of John, the 20th chapter. You see, he told Peter, when thou art converted, strengthen the brethren. He told him that right after he said, Satan desires to sift you as wheat, but I prayed for you. And then he says, when thou art converted, he didn't say, if you're going to be converted. Oh, yeah. He said, when you are converted, strengthen the brethren. You see, Peter was not converted. He told him that. And we have evidence of the fact of, being, of that being the case. Why? Because in John 20, after Jesus had been resurrected, the Bible declares that Jesus did this to the disciples. Verse 22 in chapter 20 of, of John. And when he had said this, he breathed on them. And said unto them, receive ye the Holy Ghost. Yes. Yes. What is it that happens when conversion takes place in the heart of a man or woman? He comes in, he comes in and occupies the house. You remember the interview at the midnight occasion where Nicodemus meets with Jesus. And he said, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. Yes. But that which is born of the spirit is spirit the same thing that transpired when adam was brought to life when god breathed his breath into the nostrils of man he was born into the world converted with the power of the living god through the holy spirit the ruach the breath of god inside of him this is what happened to the disciples after christ arose he breathed on them and they received his spirit, they were converted. Now watch this, watch this. The very next chapter testifies of the fact that he had been converted because Jesus confronts Peter and he asked him the question as he came to talk with them. It says in verse 14 of chapter 21, this is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to the disciples. After that, he was risen from the dead. So when they had died, Jesus saith to Simon, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? And Peter responded to him, yes, Lord, thou knowest I love thee. That's the first time. Then he saith to him, feed my sheep. Then he saith again the second time. Simon, son of Jonah, loveth thou me? And he said to him, yes, Lord, you know I love you. And he said, feed my sheep. Now watch this. Then a third time. He says, Simon, son of Jonas, loveth thou me? And it was suddenly as though Peter recognized some, some deja vu moment here. Because he had re realized that, wait a minute, there were three times that I denied Christ before the cock had crowed. And now Jesus has asked me twice, do you love me? And instead of Peter saying, you know, I love you this third time, he says to him, verily, verily, he says to him, Lord. You know all things. Yeah. Thou knowest. I love you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He confessed. And then notice carefully, he had told him twice to feed his sheep and once to feed his lamb. And he had told Peter before he went to the cross, when thou art converted, strengthen the brethren. Here he received the admonition from Jesus. That after he knew Christ, knowing he would fail him three times, he comes back and asks him three times. And then he gives him his assignment, strengthen the brethren, which means he had been converted. Amen. Amen. He had been converted. Hallelujah. I'm here to tell you that Peter didn't understand his assignment with God because he hadn't been converted. There are many who believe they can do more for God 
in their own strength or even through the help of God than God has already done to secure their salvation. But I'm telling you that the true gospel embraced by those who are converted is that no matter how much I try, failure will be inevitable, but I am, I am victorious because of what Jesus has done. For by one offering hath he perfected them that are sanctified. You can walk with assurance knowing that what Jesus has already done will get you to the finish line. Amen. Amen. I'm wondering if there is a song that is prepared at this time that will bring us closer in our understanding of Christ, the one who will give us the strength that sometimes even in our humanness as we fail, God has promised that he can take us to the finish line. For the race is not given to the swift, no, the battle to the strong. For it's not by might nor by power, but by his spirit that he will give us the endurance to meet every challenge to cross the final finish line. Please open your hearts to receive this message in song. his holy name. 
so grateful this morning. We believe that God is still a prayer honoring God. And that with assurance, when we call on his name, that he will give us the strength to endure. And perhaps of those who have heard this morning, there may be those amongst us who are convicted and say, Pastor, I desire for my faith to be renewed. I desire for uh, God to re-strengthen the weak places and that my faith would be what endures to the very end. Maybe you have gotten circumstances that have weakened your resolves, situations or tribulations that have uh, made you feel in some ways that God is speaking against you when he still is very much in your corner. And you want to say today, uh, Pastor, uh, I'm yet again renewing my covenant. I'm coming to God and saying, let's do it again. Uh, breathe new life over and in me. If that's your desire, I invite you to just simply raise your hand, uh, be it physically or by way of electronic uh, acknowledgement, raised hand. Let's pray. Father, today we have been reminded that self-confidence is never the assurance that we should have. Because when our faith, or at times we become vulnerable to our own humanness, then we inevitably become weakened toward our faith in you. When we should always keep our eye on you because by beholding we become changed, not by depending on strength, humanness, or ability. Lord, we put our trust in you. We renew our covenant of faith towards you. It was that night that Jesus spoke of his kingdom when he gave them the blood covenant there at the Passover, wherein he would remind them of what he would do, that he would go to Calvary and perform a work that would finish the very contract or covenant that was needing to be ratified. We call it the finished work of Christ. And so because you were faithful and courageous, oh God, enough to do the finished work, take your last breath and say, Father, forgive them. We once again receive the strength of that forgiveness and renew our covenant of faith with you that where sin abounds, grace does much more abound. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your promise. We thank you for your mercy in Jesus' name. Amen. Right, Sister Angelia, we thank you so much for your uh, contribution to this ministry. I'm going to invite you at this time to acknowledge our guests and to give them a warm welcome. Thank you, Pastor Brown. It's my signal honor to welcome those who worshipped with us today and more so those on Facebook. I am sure that by now you know that we consider you a part of the family once you've been here more than once. And I cannot say it often enough that we are family. And so I just want to express our gratitude to you for having worshiped with us today. And I trust that as always, 
you were blessed and that you will make it your resolution to come to worship with us again each Sabbath and during the week. I would like to um, point your attention to some announcements that we are going to ask you to pay attention to. For those of us who are requesting prayer, you are asked to send your prayer request to us at edenhome777 at gmail.com or you may send us a text 470-701-8961 and we assure you that your request will be prayed for. I'm sure that the Lord hears us and he will answer your prayer. I ask also that those of us who are praying during the week, remember those persons who are listed for prayer, Kathleen, Elaine, Dennis, Alexander, Dominic Snyder, Marcia Reed, Kesno Sterling, Mishka Hamilton, Lenora Price, and Mr. Gordon Orville Reed. I hope I'm not missing anybody. And um, I ask for prayers on behalf of the pastors and their families, families and marriages, growth in Eden Home Ministries, ritual in temples, and of course, the additional ministers. And you know, we really need the prayers our families because the devil doesn't like to see anything that is good and so he throws his folks in there and he creates a lot of problems for us and so I ask that you really pray for each and family that God will bless us. I ask also that you remember to give a donation to the Mishka Hamilton GoFundMe on behalf of Mishka her she has done surgery on one hip already and she has a second one to do. So we are halfway there and we continue to solicit your donations and your prayers as we seek to find the funds to assist her to get the second surgery. <coughs> I'm sorry. I invite you to join us on Wednesday evenings at 7.30 Eastern and 6.30 Central for our Kingdom Petition, which I refer to, to as our refreshing in the midweek. Come and worship with us and be blessed. <coughs> I'm sure that as you come and worship with us, the Lord will bless you and you will go away rejoicing and remember to bring a friend because you want your friends to be blessed as much as you are blessed. <coughs> Love Life Coaching Academy.com is hosted by Drs. Brano and they're there to help you with whatever problems you're facing, whether it be marital, whether it be financial, emotional, mental, whatever it is, you can get in touch with them at drsbranner at gmail.com or Arthur Brano at 124 at yahoo.com. <coughs> As you know, any organization needs financial assistance or we need finances. So I am soliciting again your kingdom giving by way of cash app at dollar sign Eden Home Ministries, bell Eden Home dot ministries at gmail.com or using PayPal Eden Home Ministries dot org slash donate. Help us to build up the kingdom and to help those who are in need. This afternoon, our Bible study continues online with Aloma and Alvin Jones. Uh, link will be placed in the chat so that you'll be able to access the Bible study. And if you have not seen the link, you can send an email to alvin2538 at gmail.com and you will be able to join the Bible study, which is usually very interesting. So next week, our Proclaimer will be Pastor Brian Reed, our senior pastor, and we invite you to come out to support him 
and to be blessed as he breaks the word that he has from the Lord. I just want to thank you for coming and trust that you were really blessed today and that you had a good day. And I pray that as we go through the ensuing week, that you will meditate on what you have learned and that you will stay close to the Lord and you will not just depend on yourself, but depend on the grace of God and what he has already done for us and you will make it through by his grace. Thanks again. Thank you for coming. Those of you who are on Facebook, we thank you for being here with us and we ask that you continue to come and while you join on Facebook, invite a friend to join as well. Blessings to you all. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Sister Angelia. You're always so, and so well. At this time, I invite you to bow your heads as we ask God's blessing. Now may the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon us and be gracious unto us. May he lift up the light of his countenance and give us peace. Peace in our hearts, peace in our homes, peace in our neighborhoods, community, within our church, and throughout the world. We thank you, O oh God. Now, as we part from this presence, may your presence never part from us because we claim it as being so that you would never do so. You would never leave nor forsake. In Christ's name, amen.